Hello everyone and welcome to Microsoft Access 2016 Basics. My name is Steve Bishop and in this video we're going to take a look at the different table data types. So let's first start off by taking a look at text fields. You'll notice that we have a short text data type where we can put up to 255 characters. This also corresponds with how much memory will be occupied inside of your application. You should keep an eye on the size of memory that is being used by your different data types. The less, the better. Now, if you're looking to store more text than just the 255 characters, you can go with a long text field type. Now, you can put up to a full gigabyte worth of text inside of a long text field. Please note, though, that Access databases can only contain up to two gigabytes worth of data. Next, let's look at the numeric fields. So first, we have a byte, which can contain any whole number from 0 to 255. You'll notice that a byte takes up one byte of memory. Now technically, I'm saying memory here, but I also mean size on the hard drive. Since databases store their data onto the hard drive, these memory sizes are actually also sizes on the hard drive. Next, there's an integer, and an integer can contain any whole number from negative 32,768 to positive 32,767. And you'll see that it takes up two bytes of memory or hard disk space. Now, if you need to contain a whole number larger than 32,767, then you're going to want to go to a long integer, where you can see we go up to the billions. So far, these values have only been whole numbers, though. What if we want to store some decimals? Well, the first data type that can contain a decimal point is a single. Now, a single can basically contain up to seven digits. The next size up from a single is a double and a double can contain up to 15 digits. Then finally, we have the decimal, and a decimal is very large. It can contain up to 28 digits. Now with the single, double, and decimal data types, you can store whole numbers in them. It's just that it will also keep track of the decimal points. Some special numeric fields to know about are the currency data types, which contain up to 15 digits to the left side of the decimal point and four digits to the right, and the replication ID, which is a very special data type. One thing to know about the replication ID is that it's also known as the globally unique identifier. So we'll find that replication IDs are often used for identifiers or unique values that are needed for a record. And finally, here are the other data types that you'll find in an Access database. We've already seen a date time where we can store date time based data. We've also seen an auto number where the number was automatically generated by the database. We did not have to enter the value in ourselves. Notice that an auto number can be either a long integer or a replication ID. Next, we have a yes or no data type. Now the yes, no data type goes under a lot of different names a true-false, a boolean, a bit, or even sometimes referred to as a flag. Next, we have OLE objects. And OLE objects are embeddable objects similar to attachments, but with far more limited capabilities. These are objects that you can actually put inside of your database that are things like files or images. And of course, we have hyperlinks, where we can store email or web addresses, but there is a 2048 character limit. Now we also have attachments, which are embeddable objects, just like the OLE object, but attachments are the much more preferred way that you store objects in the database now. And finally, we have a calculated data type where it actually stores the result of a calculation. Notice that a calculated field will actually store the result of the calculation not the calculation itself. Now I'm going to post a link in the video description below that will take you to the different data types and field properties. It's much more explanatory than what I can do in this video. And it's the official 
Office documentation. Now let's add a few other fields of different data types to our database. So I'd like to add a few additional fields to my people table. The first one I'd like to add is a salary field. Let's set the data type to currency. And you'll notice down here in my field properties, I have a few different options that I can select for the currency data type, including how many different decimal places am I going to store the data? We'll just go ahead and leave this on auto for now. If I wanted a different name for my field when it appears in the data sheet view, I could add a special caption. You'll also see that I can have a default value. Let's go ahead and change this default value to 50,000. I can also add a validation rule, which I'm not gonna get into right now, but it's essentially a set of rules that I can specify for how small or large the user must enter the values. Then there's the validation text, which is an error message that appears if the value entered does not match the rule. I can also say that the field is required. So in order for someone to add a people record, they should have to enter in a salary. I'm gonna leave that set to no for now though. Indexing is a very special topic that we'll talk about perhaps at some later point in this video series, but just understand that it helps speed up the searches whenever you're trying to look for things inside of a table. Then finally, there's the text alignment, which is how should the values appear inside the datasheet view? Should they just be in a general alignment or should they be aligned to left, center, right, or distributed, sometimes also known as justified? Now, these are just the field properties for a currency data type. You'll notice that if you go to any of the other data types, you'll have several different other field properties. If you're not sure what each one of them does, you can simply click on it, look over here to the right to see what that particular field does. Let's go ahead and add another field name here. This time, I'm gonna make it a picture of the person. And this is going to be an attachment. So we're gonna actually attach images for the people. And one last field that I'd like to add here is an active field. Now an active is a yes or no. So let's select yes or no. Now in database circles, an active field is a special field that helps us identify whether or not that particular record should be active or inactive. When we start talking about some more abstract concepts with database management, we'll revisit this active field topic later. But for right now, just know that you should, on just about every one of your tables, have an active field set to yes or no. I'm also going to set it so that the default value of an active field is set to yes. That way, by default, every single entry on this people table will be active. Let's go ahead and change some values inside of my data sheet view. For the salary, I'm gonna go ahead and just keep it at 50,000. And I'd like to go ahead and attach an image here for my profile. And I'm gonna go ahead and set my active to true. I'm gonna also set active to true for all of the other people in my people table. And let's set some salaries for Shane and for Denise. So there we go. We've added some additional fields to our people table of a variety of different data types. Yeah.